I want you to grab your Bibles tonight and let's get right into it. We're going to go to John 10 and 19. That's John 10 and 19. Hallelujah. And tonight we want to talk on the three forms of deception. The three forms of deception. How many know that it is the will of God that we be not ignorant of Satan's devices. It's very important for us to understand what it is that God purposed us to do and for us to understand how our enemy operates and the things that he does to try to stop us from receiving and doing what it is God created us to do. So let us pray. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We give your name the glory, honor, and praise, O oh God. We exalt you, we lift you, we thank you for just being awesome, amazing, and wonderful. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you'll be with your people. I ask as this word go forth that it won't return to you void, but that it do exactly what it is that you sent it forth to do. I pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that everyone that receives this word will not only be hearers, but doers also. I pray to God that something change. I pray to God that something take place. I pray to God in the name of Jesus that they will feel, experience, and see you through this. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus that you'll continue to have your way in their lives. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. First of all, you have to, I want you to get in your mind, I want you to understand that each and every person, human, child, was created with purpose. You got to understand that God created each and every one of us with a purpose in mind. The Bible says it like this, that God created all things and, for, and by all things he created for himself. Meaning that he did not create you just for you to be hanging around. You're not just hanging out. You're here with a purpose in life. And as we spoke many times before, understanding and recognizing that purpose have to become your primary focus about your life. Without understanding why you're here, the enemy, it deals ground to the enemy to come and tell you anything and everything that he desired to say if you don't recognize why you are here. Unfortunately, people that commit suicide have been tricked to believe that there is no purpose. I remember when I had to fight suicidal thoughts myself that many times I was willing to give up on life because I didn't understand the purpose of living. I didn't understand that God had a purpose for me. And I was told constantly over and over again by the enemy that God had made a mistake when he created me. Now, how many understand and recognize that God makes no mistakes? Now, I did not understand that at that time. I did not get it at that time. So it was my all my failed attempts at suicide Thank be unto God. It never took place. I tried, but it wouldn't take place. Because in my mindset, in my mind, that there was no hope. And many parents, and my parents to this day, probably didn't even know how much or how many times I tried. They had, it was clueless of understanding and recognizing what I was facing and what I was going through because I have a purpose in all my life. And many things that you're facing and that you're going through in your life and what your children is going through is because of the purpose upon their life. 
And a lot of times we have to take the time to, to pull our kids into our uh, 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 lives again and to have a conversation with them, letting them understand how important it is for them to be here and why they are here. But I found that you can't teach others about their purpose if you don't know yours. Come on, somebody. Amen. So in John uh, 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 10 and 9, it, it, I, wanted, I want to start there. It says, Jesus, this is Jesus talking. He said, I am the gate. Whoever entered through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pastor. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to its full. Understand, we talked about this before on how God comes to give us life and life more abundantly. He came to give us a, a, a good life, a true life, a abundant life. We talked on that before. But you have to understand in order for you to operate in that abundant life, you're going to have to shut down the enemy that's coming to steal, kill, and destroy that abundant life. When you was created, when I was created, we was created in this world. When we popped into this world, the enemy sought at that moment to destroy you, to kill you from day one. So you have to understand and recognize that if you, whatever year old that you are, this is how many years that you have survived the onslaught or the attack of the enemy that has been trying to destroy and kill your life. You have to understand that he is, his purpose is to stop you from fulfilling your purpose. I'm going to say that one again. His purpose is to stop you from fulfilling your purpose. Okay? In other words, he wants you to not ever be who God created you to be so that you would never do what it is that God wants you to do. Right. Okay? So, a thief. Let's look at what a thief do. Look, look at this, listen to this definition. A thief is a person who steals another person's property, especially, this is the one I like, especially by stealth. In without using force or violence. So the enemy, as we know, before, as we spoke on many times before, he operates in such a way that you don't even recognize that he's operating. See, you don't see the fact that every time you drink and get in a car and drive, you're risking your life. You don't see the fact that every time you lay with this woman or that man or this person or that person without a condom, it's a possibility you can lose your life. Or if just doing it the wrong way, period, you can lose your life. You don't understand that he want to hook you up with a violent individual that will try to cut you or hurt you and while you're sleeping at night. You don't understand how much death is around you. And death been around you even before this COVID thing even appeared. We only recognize death based on what we see now on the TV with all of this COVID. But what you don't understand and recognize, death been around you since the moment you was born. And the enemy sought if he can have his way, would have took you out a long time ago. It is God's protection and God's covering that got you as far as you are right now. So in this series, we're going to talk. This is part one. We're going to we could probably going to be like a three-part series with this. I want to give you an understanding of your adversary and the enemy. Go to Isaiah 14 and 12. <clears throat> it says that a thief steals without using force or violence. The reason why the enemy cannot use force or violence is because he has to get permission through God to do what he does. And there are certain things that God will not allow. But you have to understand, since he cannot kill you, he can, he, 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 he's very cunning in how he can get you to try to kill yourself. 
See, it, he wouldn't, his, it, a lot of times we blame a lot of things on him, which it is him, but it is him operating through a, 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 a cunning way where we don't even recognize it's him that's doing it. We think it's us. So let's look at this. Isaiah 4, 12, it says this. How have you fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn? You have been cast down to the earth. Who, you who once laid low the nations, you said in your heart that you will ascend to the heavens and I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost height of Mount Zipher. I will ascend above the top of the clouds and I will make myself like the most high. You have to understand and recognize that the enemy, right from the beginning, now this is this is Isaiah speaking of, and Jesus will speak on it later on, how the enemy was kicked out of heaven based on the fact of him trying to be cunning and slick and get in position of where God is. Now you got, now understand something now. The enemy felt that he deserved the worship that God was getting. So you have to understand it's one of the reasons why he hates you because of the worship that you give to God. He rather you worship him instead of you worshiping God. So every time that you begin to worship God, not only in the church, not only in the lifting of the hands, or not only when you are uh, listening to music, but when you, but living right, doing the right things is a form of worship to God. Obedience is a form of worship to God. And every time you obey, every time you do the right thing, every time you choose right instead of wrong, you just worship God. And every time you worship God, it agitates Satan. It caused him to go back to the drawing board and he looked for another way to come against you in order to stop you from being from worshiping God. In order to stop you from being what God created you to be, which is a temple or which is a purple, a person who was purposeful of worshiping God. Number one, as part of your purpose and also fulfilling what God needs to be done here on earth, okay? <clears throat> so let's look at this, I'm, I'm, I'm moving slow for a reason, okay? Because I really want y'all to understand. He told, he said in his heart that he was gonna ascend above high. In other words, I'm going to go higher than the God that I'm worshiping and that all of y'all are worshiping, okay? Now he's up there before the Lord making these statements in his heart, the Bible says. In his heart, he desired, so we understand now the enemy's desire. His desire is for all to worship him instead of anybody worshiping God, okay? So for those that's in the world, by default, they worship him. Those that are into anything besides God worship the enemy, okay? If you could, because you don't, you're not going to flat out give God the glory and praise and worship God if you're not a child of God, okay? <clears throat> so he knows that. So his job is to push you off of your status. He's trying to get you thrown out of the family so that you're not worshiping God and serving the Lord like you're supposed to. And how he does this is by cunningness. By getting, trying to get you to a place where you feel that you ought to be worshiped just like he was. He tried to bring you to a place where you would do the same type of thing that he did. He trying to get God to be mad at you like God got upset at him. He trying to get the he trying to get God to disconnect from you like he been disconnected from God. So you have to understand First of all, the plot and the plan and the strategy of the enemy is to destroy your relationship with God. He comes against your faith. He comes against your trust. He comes against everything that God told you about yourself, getting you to believe him instead of believing God. 
He trying to find interruptions in a relationship. How many times have we have seen a natural relationship that somebody else comes in and separate the two people that were that was together? Because they'll come in with some foolishness and get in the ear of one of the other. And whoever ear that they were able to influence the most causes a conflict between the two to cause the two to separate. That's the plan and the strategy of the Satan in the lives of a believer. He's trying to get you to stop believing God. He's trying to get you to walk away from the things of God. He's trying to get you to the point because it's his desire to be God. He don't want to be like God. Like a child of God, he want to be God. Which is two different things all together, okay? He want the worship. He want the praise. He want the honor. He want the respect. He want the power. He want everything that God is. And the way to affect God is to mess with God's children and to cause a conflict between God and his child. You want to hurt a parent, turn the child against the parent or turn a parent against the child. So this is the, so you have to understand what the enemy is trying to do. Now look at the word kill. The word kill simply means this. It says to it put an end to or to cause failure or defeat. He want to put an end to the relationship. He want to cause failure in the relationship. He don't want you to really believe that you can trust God. Anybody ever been in a relationship where they're not trusted? You know how comfortable it is to be with someone you don't trust? Throughout the word of God, we hear God says, trust me in everything. All he talks about is trusting me, trusting me, trusting me. But the enemy likes to set us in position where we don't trust God. He allows things to happen so that he, so that he can go back and say, see, you can't trust him. You were standing on it. You were believing God. You were standing, do, trying to do the right thing. You was trusting God and it didn't work. You can't trust God. But how can you have a relationship, brother, if you can't trust who you're in a relationship with? It affects the relationship. It's a hard relationship to be in if the trust is not there. It's very difficult to be there. That's why he comes against your faith. Because faith is nothing but believing and trusting God. So I'm going to come against your faith to believe, make you believe that God ain't going to do what God said he's going to do in your life. So help. So let's back up. I want you to understand, first of all, <laughs> being created with a purpose, this is God's way of letting you know, this is what I have for you. This is who you are. The enemy tries to interrupt that by making you feel that he doesn't have anything for you and this is not who you are. So he makes the situation that you go, that he called you to, very difficult for you to complete it. He makes it hard for you because you don't realize that God, whatever God called you to, God has already given you what you need in order to complete what it is that he called you to. See, he already gave you what you need to fulfill the purpose that he created you for. It's the enemy that won't want you to want you to think that it's upon you. This is why many men run from the call of God because they think that when God called me to do the will of God, it's on me. It's not on you. God already knew that what he called you to do, he already given you the ability to do it. It is him that gives you the talents, the gifts, and everything that you need to fulfill what it is that he created you for. But you start to believe in you and not in God. This is where the trick of the enemy came in. The same thing with him. He started to believe the very worship he was giving God instead of realizing the worship was for God and not for himself. So many people blows their purpose in life because they can't understand that it's not about you, it's about the God that's in you. God want to use you as a vessel to fulfill what it is he created you for 
and not you thinking that it's you. You, you know that you can't do it on your own. See, you can't fulfill God's will for your life without God. So in order to fulfill your will for God in your life, you gotta be connected to God and have a relationship with God so you can fulfill it. So the enemy knows if I can stop the relationship, then you would never fulfill the will. Do you get what I'm saying? And if you don't ever fulfill the will, then you can never be what you were created for. And if you never created what you was created for, then I can tell you that there's no sense for your creation. So why don't you just kill yourself and leave? Oh, come on, somebody. I'm talking to somebody tonight. <coughs> Jonah 1, verses 1. And I'm, like I said, I'm moving slow because I really want y'all to understand this. Jonah says, in Jonah 1, it says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness, because its wickedness has come up before me. Keep your finger there because we're going to stay in that book for a long time. So first of all, now understand, now here is somebody, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm just bringing out what I've been saying. Here's somebody who hears their purpose. Your purpose, why I created you, what I created you for, Jonah, is that you go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it in its wickedness. Now understand, first of all, the city of Nineveh was a great city, okay? They worshiped plenty of gods. They had all types of gods. It wasn't, they, they didn't, it wasn't the God of heaven. It wasn't the God of, uh, that we know. They had other false gods. These people were so cruel in their worship to God that for their enemy, for, for them to, for people to recognize their enemy, I mean, I mean, for people that try to come against them, they would take their enemy and skin them alive, put hang them on the walls. So when the enemy comes to see that, they scare them to death. So I understand that we always beat up Jonah, but you gotta understand what God is asking Jonah to do. He asking him to go and be an enemy to that city. Where this great city, a whole city, he go, go there and preach against it. Come against their gods and tell them how wrong they and wicked they are. Jonah did what most of us would have done. <laughs> what most of us still do. It says in three, Jonah ran away. <laughs> now, Jonah ran away because I believe the scriptures does not depict it, but Jonah ran away because the enemy deceived him. He made him see what he could not do instead of allowing him to see what he could. See, when, when God calls us and asks us to fulfill what it is that he wants us to fulfill in our lives, he called, the enemy paints the picture on how badly that you can't do it and never show you why you can. He always presents your failures and present and show you how difficult this could be, but he never ever show you the God that's with you that is bigger than that difficulty that you see. Mm. So what he did not show him was that God was going to go with him. See, God will never call you to fulfill his will by yourself. That's the purpose of having his spirit in us. The spirit of God goes everywhere we go. It does, it does whatever we does because it's in us. So you gotta understand whenever God calls you to something, He's not only talking, He's not talking to you, your flesh only, He's talking to your soul, but also the Spirit of God that's already in you. That's right. So you're going with the ability and the power of God. Jonah didn't recognize that. Jonah knew all he thought of is his insufficiencies. All he thought of is how he could not do this. Moses did the same thing. Several others did the same thing. Now look, look at it though. It says, Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. Now that's not the, that's not the city. He went down to Joppa 
When he found his ship bound for the port, after paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed to Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Now that's the first mistake. There is no fleeing for God. When God calls you to something, there is no getting away from it. Because what you don't understand, your very life is tied to your purpose. Without fulfilling your purpose, there is no reason for you. We have to get that and understand that. Because if I don't understand, if I don't, if not, for, not fulfilling my purpose for life, then there, my life doesn't make sense. My life only makes sense if I'm fulfilling what I was created to do. Everything else is a waste of time. So, <clears throat> so you have to understand, look what's going on here. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship was that was the, the ship was threatened to be broke up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to their own God. That's a problem. And they threw a cargo, they threw their cargoes into the sea to lighten the ship. Figured the ship was too heavy, was starting to sink. Let's just throw, throw this stuff off. And they started throwing stuff out in the water, trying to keep the boat afloat. But Jonah had gone down below deck, where he laid down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went up to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he'll take notice of us so that we would not perish. Now Jonah did, is running from God, is now in a place where he's hiding from God. Hid from God for so long he fell asleep while he hid. I've done this before. Playing how I go see I said I hid so well that I fell asleep and woke up like hours later. Now understand what's going on here. He's running and he's hiding, trying to hide from God. Let me help you. You cannot hide from God because the Bible says God's eyes go to and fro throughout all the earth. So God sees it all. So whatever you hide, whatever you think you're hiding from, there is no, there's no place to hide from God. He sees it all. He sees the mistake you're going to make before you even make the mistake. He already know. Okay. So in this situation, he's hiding. The sailor on the boat said, listen, something is wrong. Get up and pray to your God. You know what I mean? So maybe he'll listen to you. I mean, listen to uh, 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 your God will listen to us because ours is not working. We pray for, uh, to our guys and, and nothing happening here. So get up and listen and, and, and you pray. Then the sailors said to each other, come let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots, and the lots fell on Jonah. <laughs> in other words, they try to figure out who in the world, what, what happened, because this wasn't going on at first. Everything was okay at first. When you outside of the will of God, you start to affect everybody and everything around you. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand, and these men's life was in jeopardy because they was interfering with what God was doing. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful. I talked to you guys about this before. You gotta be careful not to interfere with when God is at work. God was at work in Jonah's life. He was trying to get Jonah attention. He needed Jonah to recognize, I see you, I know where you are, and I told you to do something, and you're not doing it. So when they decide, when they try to figure out who was it and what was going on, they threw they they pretty much like drawn scrolls. And Jonah pulled up the, 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 the smallest girl, and they they knew it's you. It, it's something. It, it has something to do with you. It should have known because you're the one out of everybody that's praying. You don't want to sleep, okay? But look at this now. So they asked him, "Tell us who is responsible for making all this trouble for us? What kind of work you do? Where do you come from? What country you came from? For what people are you from? I mean, they're trying to fix, dude. Man, ain't nobody trying to die because of you, bro. What's the problem?" What's the situation? He answered and said to them, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made a sea in the dry land. This terrified them. They asked, well, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to you 
to make the sea calm down for us. In other words, man, what do I need to do to get God from killing all of us trying to kill you? Now, you got to understand that this is what I'm trying to show you. The purpose of your life is that important. If you're not going to fulfill it, there's no reason for you to be here. If you make up your mind that you're not going to do the will of God, and I'm not going to fulfill the purpose that God created me for, there is no reason for you to continue here on earth. Look at this situation. Jonah said, listen, I understand. It's my fault. It's me disobeying God. Pick me up, throw me in the sea, and it will calm down. I know this is my fault, that this great storm had come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to the land. Now, see, they didn't want to. They didn't want to do this now. They didn't want to be part of that. Maybe we didn't throw you in a seat. No, eh? no. Whatever situation between you and God, I don't want to get involved. Leave they smart enough to figure that, figure that one out. But they could not, for the sea grew wilder and uh, uh, wider and than, than before. It got worse. They had to fulfill the will of God. So they said, then they cried out to the Lord, please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man for you. Lord, you have, Lord, have done as you please. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At the time, the man greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. They threw him over the ship. And when they did it, Everything calmed down. Because this is what God, God was trying to get Jonah's attention. Don't let, a lot of times what happens in our lives, these storms and these issues that pop up is because God is trying to get your attention. These situations, issues that you're facing is because you're offside of the purpose of God. You can always know when you're outside of the purpose of God is because you start to develop storms in your life. You start to start dealing with issues and situations and circumstances that you wouldn't normally deal with. And all of a sudden, now nah, I'm dealing with all of this and I don't know what's going on. It's because you got off the purpose of God. You got off track. And you got to get back on track in order to get things to calm back down. Amen? Amen. So look at Jonah. Jonah. Jonah did what we all should have to learn to do. Now the Lord provided, a, oh, I'm sorry, where we at? Instead of the man, okay, then they took Jonah the most of all. Okay, at this time, the man greatly feared the Lord. Okay, now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of that fish three days and three nights. Now, you got, now, now understand, now listen to, look, look at where he at. He's in the belly of a whale. It's only one, two things going to happen here. Either he's going to spit you out and you're going to live, or he's going to digest you and you're going to die. Or you're going to fulfill the will of God for your life. You'll be faced with a choice. In a lot of cases, we're faced with choices. What are you going to do? Jonah was faced with a choice now. What are you going to do? Now, the deception of the enemy is that you, you, are, you might as well just go ahead and give up. You're already dead. You already, look where you at. Look how bad things have gotten for you. God does not care nothing about you. You can die at any minute. You would have, you, all you got to do, to, all you got to do is swallow. You go. But God held him there in position just to see what he's going to do. The Bible said, Jonah prayed. From inside of the fish, he prayed to the Lord. He said, In my distress, I call to you, Lord, and you answer me. From deep, in the realms of the dead, I call for help. And you listen to my cry. You heard me into the depths, into the very heart of the sea. The currents swirl, the currents swirl all about me. All the waves and breakers swept over me. I said I have been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. Sound like he's telling me that Lord, he sound like you repenting to me. He repented and he said, okay, Lord. And this is what many was gonna have to do. You want to repent so that you can get back on track, so that you can get back to where you need to be with God. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweeds have wrapped around my head. The roots of the mountain have sank down. The earth beneath me buried me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life from the pit. 
when my life was embedded away, I remember you, Lord, and I may pray, and then my prayer rose to you to the holy temple. Those who cling to worthy, worthless idols turn away from uh, from God's love for them. But I will shout of uh, uh, grateful praise with sacrifices to you that I will vow, I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And then the Lord commanded the fish to vomit him. He made the decision to fulfill the will of God for his life. The deception was that he can run from God. The deception was that you can hide from God. The deception of that you 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 know you 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 can't fulfill what it is that God needs you to fulfill. But at the same time, he realized, but look how far he had to go to realize that it's not about me. Listen to the prayer. The prayer was speaking that, God, I will do what it is that you called me to do. Just spare me. Just give me a chance. Give me another chance. Give me another opportunity. Many of us have missed the first opportunity that God has given us. Now, God comes around with a second opportunity. And it's serious tonight because we have to get to a place where we are not deceived any longer because the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. He is not playing with you. He wants the relationship between you and God because you got to understand, once you make the decision that you're not going to be for God and that you're not going to be part of God's uh, team, that you're not going to be uh, a son or a daughter of God, you have to understand, you just made a decision to separate yourself forever from God. God gave him a chop and gave him another chance and he spit him up. And three, it said, Jonah's den goes to Nineveh. <laughs> the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Now notice now, God never changed the purpose he had for his life. No matter what all that he went through, God never changed it. Right from the get-go, that's what he should have did in the beginning. Just go and do what it is I created you to do. Quit doing your own thing. Do what it is that I created you to do. Because doing your own thing is very funny. The very thing that he was afraid of, losing his life by going to Nineveh and preach, he still could have lost his life going the opposite. The very thing that he feared, he was facing life and death situation. Because once again, the purpose of your life and my life is to fulfill what it is that God created us to do. And once we don't, and we get off of that, then we blow it. We mess it. <clears throat> I want you to look at, I want you to think about this, this script, this, um, definition of destroy. The word destroy simply means to ruin someone emotionally and spiritually. The enemy's job is to destroy you spiritually. He want to bring you down to where you have no power or you're not effective at all. The purpose of the reason why Bishop preached so much about us not looking like the world, acting like the world, being like them, understanding there is a difference, because you carry no power when you are like them. That's right. You don't. You have nothing to show. Your salt don't have any savor, flavor. They don't see any difference. And if there's no difference, there's no demonstration of the power of God. Then you're useless. You don't. You, you, you serve no purpose. You're not going to win anybody over to Christ that way. So Satan knows that. So he keeps us hooked up with the latest bag. And everybody try to go with the latest fad and do the same old thing. So that as long as you go with the fad, then you are unrecognizable to the world. They can't see God because you look just like them. Show me the difference between you and I so that I can serve whom you serve. Because I know what I serve. I know what I'm doing. And it's not working. Show me something different. We have to show people different. So, I, so again, tonight, I just wanted to kind of lay a foundation about this, on, on this word, helping you to understand that there is forms of, this, there are three forms of, this, uh, of, of deception. 
Come on, stand. I want you to understand that these forms, so that we are not ignorant of the enemy devices, we'll get real deep next week. Today, we just kind of scratched the surface a little bit because I just kind of wanted you to kind of get a little taste. Mm -hmm. But I need you to understand and recognize why this is important. It's important because many of us are not where we ought to be or who we ought to be because of the deception of Satan. We are afraid of the things that God gave us when God had already given us the ability to complete whatever it is that he gave us. It's funny, the very thing that you're looking for outside of God is already, already there in front of you. You just have not seen it. You just have not tapped into it because you're looking elsewhere instead of looking at God. And the enemy wants you to continue to look elsewhere so that that thing get the glory instead of God. Because once again, if I'm in a relationship with you and I don't acknowledge you, I don't love on you, I don't worship you, then am I really in a relationship with you? If I don't trust you, if, there's, if these conflicts is in a relationship, that we know that that relationship would never, ever work. Anybody, you can tell, a, a kid can tell you, if they don't trust each other, they ain't, ain't gonna work. Anybody can tell you that. Well, that's the problem. The enemy is trying to keep you from trusting and believing in God. Trying to get you off so that you can do your own thing. To get you twisted up so that you can get messed up and get wrapped up in him. And then you'll find yourself worshiping him instead of God. And that's crazy to worship someone that hates you instead of worshiping the one that loves you. The one that hates you did nothing for you. The one that loved you sent his son to die for you. All of that just to have a relationship with you. Died on a rugged cross alone. Because all his boys was gone. Alone. He was laughed at, flogged, beat, spit on, talked against, pulled, scratched, cut. All of that because God wanted a relationship with you. And you rather serve an enemy who did nothing but from day one try to destroy you. You have a decision to make. And I pray that your decision is to worship and to stay in a relationship with God or to get into a relationship with God if you unsaved. We'll see you on the next one. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, God.